Yeah, but not now that you have the pads. Besides, they're great I heard that. <laughs> oh, my blood job? You mean you felt that? Ugh, you blew good there. Oh, sure, thank Do you. the uh, the <laughs> teleportation circles in our city are they frequently used or are they like derelict? Uh they're rarely used. Um, that was Dooley spitting on it beforehand. <laughs> so they're guarded, right? Like they're, they're guarded. Uh, guarded yes. You guys, yeah, you guys constantly have four um, four regular troops and then two specialists that will. They'll be guarding each of these portals because you never know what the fuck's going to happen. You talked about bringing me to the fire deck. Proper defense spells cast upon those portals. Pardon me. The defense spells on those portals. Huh. The proper ones. The like yeah. old portal. Yeah. Old portal. Dude, that's a, that's a spell on this, right? Yeah. Really? You guys want old portal on this? That's fucking. When would it ever be used? Right now. On yeah. the <laughs> what? Portal what? You can use a spell called it's in second edition called old portal. You cast it on the portal here. Mm-hmm. Nothing. There was ways to spell it. There were so higher many, level wizards. There were so <laughs> many spells in the first and second edition. I don't know how to do this. Like ED and E? I like There were seven encyclopedias sh- of spells. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few that were, that were cool that they didn't put in, like the permanency spell. Permanency is a good spell. That's how you make a bunch of a little. Yeah. And it changed that one. You know, you want to make a plus one weapon, you cast a pants weapon on it. I gave, uh, if he doesn't know already, plus one, you uh, cast permits. You know, plus one weapon. The, uh, you want your man's permits. A plus three weapon? You do Sorry, three and three permits. For the, we just have one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he would know the sequence. He does. Yeah. That's typically how he actually gets there. Alright, just making sure. So you fucking run again. To who? To me. But what? In front of the council when I fucking asked him. Well, what? He's talking about. I had my character throw a fit about not being able to teleport into the volcano closer to the destination. The dragons knew nothing. Date knew nothing. What about it? You couldn't teleport to the city because we didn't know the rune uh, sequence to get there. It's like Stargate, man. Yeah, quite literally. We didn't know what the seventh chevron was. Now we know. Thank you. <laughs> I have experience right there. And they had an iris on there. So if you would have went through it anyways. Yeah. But I can face the wrong What's that? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so I'm in first. <laughs> now that I've got that all fucking figured. Did you say you were going to bring me along to the fire tank? Is that what you were going to The evil seeds that are around the land. I'm going with them because that's what my character does is combat evil. And I would bring them you want an adventure. Okay. I will my wife and her 50,000 kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was supposed to be the sound of the orphanage. No, we have my, guy, my guy cares no, about the fact that he doesn't want to get away from It's all kids. You guys are creating that part. That's not bad. He cares very much about his family. I am a smash <coughs> But he still craves adventure. Moving along. We also want to give the fire giants the opportunity to live in our city if they want to. Cameras down like a merchant. Go get the phone off the side. Phone. Huh? An embassy. It's like an opening into our land. Yeah, like we. Uh, yeah, like an embassy for the fire giants. They would have an ambassador there. No, no, man. You would have an embassy for the fire giants. Yeah. You guys have an embassy of sorts. Um. But I mean, like they're welcome to live in our city if they want to. No, they're not. The we fire giants? Yeah, they're really humongous, really and you have the top of a mountain peak. You guys don't have the space, and the fire giants don't want to live on the surface. They're like super happy in a volcano. Yeah, that's like they're yeah, but I'm the they, one that they wanted, they wanted to, to. The one that you managed or to get. They want to set up shop, like sell shit. You know, trade does occur. I've always, I've always said trade about does is a, just some form of connection to them on the, this side of the portal. Yeah, embassy. which I totally understand, he, he and that yeah. that's fine. And I just said, you guys have an embassy, but we're rushing. That's all good. Them all I didn't think the fire giants. What? Were that big. I asked them for their papers. The fire giants are huge. The giants. But what? Eighteen. I asked them for their papers. They're eighteen feet tall. Hey, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. It's fucking eight thirty here. Um, welcome to short. 
Connection with fire giants, connection with Eric Gawker, connection with the Mer people that run the rivers of the mountain. Um, all the beast races and all the king's men are getting along. It's all kosher there. But that doesn't mean that you guys are hobnobbing constantly. Merfolk don't want to leave the, uh, the rivers and fire giants don't want to leave you know, the pit, the volcano. So it goes. Uh, with that all covered, Stupidoo. Uh, where are we then? So, you say you want to go on all the points, journeys, etc., etc., and so it goes. You guys do. Uh, traveling over the course of uh, the six months, you know what? This uh, just got retired. This camera's coming in here. This one's getting blowed up. And at the end of this session, we're going to have to smash that one, because... I think you can get the individual Paul and Curtis cam out of there. Hey, no, you got to have Just me. have you. And then the chat and the bar. Would be able to the chat bar. Like that. And your feed would be a hell of a lot better. See, when we have two other players... Because if you're looking at Paul, that's a waste of space. And if you're looking at Curtis, well... If you have two people on either side... <laughs> And then we blow up this camera and it becomes two people, two people, two people, and then me. The problem is that for whatever reason, the one fucking camera has decided it needs to die. You know what I'm saying? And so say it will die. With that camera on all of the players is good. And then have a separate camera for the DM and then have your chat. Wasn't this the same other camera that you smashed? It worked a lot position? better, I think. Another, yeah, I think so. It so might, it might be the line. We don't need that many cameras. The computer, the cable. We don't actually need that many cameras. Right. And the stream does better one, yeah. Camera. But it could do also better with, and oh yeah, that's why I haven't smashed it, because it could just be a weakness in the PC. And for that reason, I want to bring in my PC from in there to here, just use my laptop for gaming, and be done with it. Why don't you just save that money up? Have you cleaned this one out lately? Could just be needed. Yeah, there's, there's, there's probably that's a half a cat yeah, there. there's probably quite a bit of cat air in there. I will freely admit. And and doobie smoke and well, doobie smoke. I did blow it out. I did blow it out. Blow it out. Don't get me wrong. When I cleaned this place, I like I don't know if you guys realized it, but I tore floor. everything yeah, out of here and yeah, bleached yeah, the fucking floor. So you smoke and pot, everything. And then that. And then that got a hefty blowout itself. Like there was dust, dirt, etc. It got taken out. Why don't I, Why don't I sit there and then you can move the camera? Because ultimately, I want to have two people. That doesn't solve the problem. Like I don't mind you sitting beside me. Well, you should sit here then. I this one. No, 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 we're giving this way too much lip service. We got a game. Play. Yes, let's play a game. So, with that said, uh, over the course of four months, etc., 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 then a moat comes through. Floating along ominously, you are awoken in the middle of the night to be made aware of its presence. And it is Master Polgraf himself knocking on your door. And as you groggily open it up to face him, he looks up at you and says, I need an expert in the arcane ways. Come with me, chosen one. What time is it? It is early. Taylor has not yet risen to give us his light. As you proceed down the hallway, making your way out towards the main corridors, then upwards to the observation towers. Before long have you reached the top, and there standing alongside Pograph and several other acolytes, you can see upon, through a gem of seeing, at a telescope, with a telescope, basically a telescope with a gem of seeing in it, uh, you can see in the distance, through the night, clear as day, a large moat. And you can feel the presence of that moat as soon as you lay an eye upon it. As sure as Paylor's sun will rise, you can feel the presence of a strange sort. A dense, thick, deathly power. Oh, paladins. It's over on the moat. Same kind of, come uh, to take over from, like, before? From before. Did you Uh, the, the lich dragon. Similar. Very similar. 
but your passive insight tells you different. For while it is the hallowed, assured presence that you would actually throw religion. How big is this small? It's small, actually. It's not humongous by any stretch. What would be the protocol for this in our city? Bring the alarm, or at this hour? You could ring the alarm, or you could alert a few people. You would cause a panic if you were to ring alarms at 3 a.m. What am I rolling? Religion. Uh, 12. You have recognized the presence that the god Kelimvor would bring. And though he is uh, and though he is a patron of death, he is one of the patrons who mills um, unequivocally, unequivocally, neutrally, uh, he's not evil. So, that's <laughs> it. Uh, you don't feel the same force that you did from the lich. You feel, assuredly, the hallowed sense of death in the distance. Now, Pograf looks to you, and he says, I am not sure if we can expect it to move upon us, but I expect that it is coming towards us currently. I can't see well enough to tell the depth. And it's true, it's coming like headlong. Is it getting bigger? You're not sure. Is it standing still? It's moving slightly. You can see that. All right. Well, we'll need to investigate, investigate the moat. Okay. It's quite a distance away. You're looking at it through a telescope. It's yeah. probably got to be a couple miles away. All right. Suddenly you see a blink of light. And you see what seems to be a falling star come away from the moat. And then wink out of existence. Then it winks back in and seems to be growing. And you can see it plain sighted off in the distance. And you see it hurling towards your mountain peak. You lose sight of it in the darkness. You throw perception. You catch sight of it again. Uh, 24. Easily do you see it. Catching it just as it's about to disappear into the treetops, it catches the reflection of the moon. And sure enough, it is shining, twinkling of its own right in that moonlight as you see it through the telescope. A moment later, poof, you see a puff of snow erupt and a couple of the trees shake about. You know the area. It's easily about 300 yards outside of town. That's it? 300 yards? Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, 300 yards. Uh, okay, let me do some math here. So, I, I, I guess, I don't know. What is the protocol for this in the city? Who would I know? Oh, okay, never mind. Talk to? It's got to be like a mile out of town. Okay. There we go. There we are. Yeah. Who, who would, who would, uh, who's responsible for this type of stuff? A couple of the acolytes are just sitting in the corner, uh, handling their rosaries and praying. And nodding to the thing. Pograp is staring off into the distance, the moonlight shining down on his irises, and he just peers over at you. He says, I haven't a clue who would come upon us. And I only hope that it's not some accursed. And he just looks off into the distance again without actually saying the last. Alright, I shall band a group of uh, reliable adventurers. He looks to you, gives you a clap on the shoulder, and then <laughs> reaches into his robe and he pulls out a small a swall of um, small a swall of paler. It says, "Go with grace. May the light of our Father shine ever upon you." May the light shine on you as well. And with that, do we still have our earpieces? Uh, not on you currently, but yeah. He got you in the middle of the night. He didn't think to grab it out of the box. He gave it a little box off the corner. That's my adventure and stuff. To be fair, if I could have taken all of those and had them reverse engineered, I would have. Well, it's been four months. You gave this back, I'm presuming. Eh. In that case, I give him the choice to give it up. I'm not really sure why I would give it back. Do you sneak it to my room in the middle of the night and take it out of my ear? <laughs> Does your ear come to Oh, that reminds me. There was uh, pulling it out just boom. <laughs> there was a tweak. Uh, I did add to the characters. I don't know actually if it shows up. Oh no! Uh, oh, by the way, if you guys 